What is up fellow nerds and welcome to Not Your Status Quo. Today we are talking what's next for the Batman. And we are filming live from Spriteville, USA, thanks to our amazing sponsor, Sprite. can't go wrong with the wonderful taste of spray. So what do we know about the Batman? We know it's not just a call, it's also a warning. <laughs> we know that he is both a bat and also a man. Man bats. Oh wait, hold on, I watched something different, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We know Batman 2, name, subject to change, <laughs> will be coming out at some point. We know that there are two shows currently in development for HBO Max, which are Penguin and a Gotham City Police Department, which we think is going to work in with Arkham Asylum. So we have that knowledge. We have obviously what's happened in the first movie. The first thing I was thinking of, how are they going to use these shows to further along the Batman story? I don't think Robert Pattinson is going to show up. But I doubt it. I think we're going to see the Penguin show be his meteoric rise to power after what happened in the Batman. We'll try our best not to spoil the movie, but potential spoilers ahead. And then I think the Gotham City Police Department is going to deal with corruption. crime, corruption that mm -hmm. we've already seen, and future corruption, and also what's going on in Arkham Asylum. We do know at the end of that movie, Riddler made a friend. So, essentially, what we're going to be doing is world building. That's what these shows are going to kind of offer as we, you know, gain more movies in the theater that tell us Batman's part of the story and his involvement. On the, uh, the television shows, we're going to be uh, learning a little bit more about Gotham and uh, Batman's rogues gallery, um, the Penguin, uh, other folks that are in Arkham Asylum that will, you know, eventually escape. <laughs> as they do. As always. <laughs> Yeah, we'll if be you, seeing the background characters yeah. in, in these TV shows, but and how much of an impact are they going to not do the way Disney does, or are they going to make this like you have to watch this in order to understand the next movie? They could. They might be doing that because I believe even Marvel, uh, Disney said recently their What If series. Didn't they say, uh, yeah, uh, you need to see What If if you want to understand Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? Like we thought at first that. They weren't going to, you know, force people to watch Disney Plus. Now they're like, yeah, you're going to have to, so start subscribing. I'm wondering if HBO Max is going to do the same thing. We're like, yeah, I mean, I guess you can just watch the Batman movies, but if you want to understand what's going on, all this world building that we're offering, you're going to have to subscribe to HBO Max. You're going to have to watch the Penguin series, Gotham PD, um, Catwoman and Ivy, whatever else they come out with, you're going to have to watch it. But I, and I think we're going to see a lot on the, at least the Gotham City Police Department show, you know, Jim Gordon working on getting the rest of the corruption out there while he's finding out just how deep it goes. And I'm hoping, because I really honestly thought we were going to see a Court of Owls Easter egg of some type in the Batman. We did not. Someone was going to be saying that little rhyme that they, they say or something like that. <laughs> so and I, creepy. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I really felt when they first introduced the Riddler. That, that was a reference to the Court of Owls because he kind of looked like you know the owl mask when he was in the dark. And I was hoping that what was going on. But, uh, See, I thought he looked more like the Zodiac Killer. I That's what they were going for, I think, too, really, with the ciphers and, yep. you know, being a, a hmm. creep. <laughs> and then I think, you know, with, we'll see Penguin's rise. We're going to see him be a part of the corruption with the Gotham City Police Department. Because obviously, Calma, you know, Carmine Falcone. That's tough. That's a lot tougher to say than I thought it would be. <laughs> Carmine Falcone had a lot of cops under him, including the commissioner, the mayor, and everybody else. He was really under his thumb. So Penguin is going to want to get those same hooks into them. So we're going to see that and how Jim Gordon deals with it and how he becomes commissioner of the Gotham City Police Department. Well, I suppose minor spoiler for the movie, but not really if you know anything about the uh, overall Batman universe. But they do mention in the movie that. If this, you know, if the, the crime is solved, it'll unravel 
Gotham City as a whole because they truly think the drugs that are being dealt and all of the uh, the crime lords that run things day to day, including the corruption of the police overlooking some of this crime, all of the underground clubs and everything, they seem to think that, yeah, this is the norm and if it, you know, disappears suddenly, it's just going to, you know, leave rise to, I don't know, a potential power vacuum or worse. And I, I love the way the Penguin was portrayed in here, too. He's, he's a bad guy, but the Batman can still go to him, and he, and he only leaves him alone. Kind of like they did the same thing like in the Gotham TV show, right? And, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when he came into the movie, what did you think? I was like, is that De Niro? You know what I mean? They did yeah. such a good job with that makeup. If I did not know that was Colin Farrell, I would have not known who it was. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just the makeup either. I mean, he like changed his voice yeah. oh, and yeah. his mannerisms and everything. He that was a lot of excellent jobs acting in this movie, but his was probably one of the best because I mean, he he looked like somebody else. I would yeah. have never guessed it was him. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I thought John Turturro was perfect. The the best Carmine Falcone I've seen. Best, you know, his mannerisms. And, oh, easily. Yeah, you know, great acting guy. Now, getting away from Gotham City Police Department, where's the Batman going from here? You know, a lot of the story in the Batman was Bruce Wayne wanting to be Batman. Mm -hmm. No longer wanting to be Bruce Wayne, basically. He was more comfortable jumping around the city in his costume than being Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. And I think we got hints from the mayor, well, mayor-elect, yeah. in that movie when she approached him and said, you could be doing more for this city. Seven million. Never leave the cave without him. And Alfred. And Alfred. And that's you know it's been a that's been a theme with a lot of comics, year one, year two, and stuff, where he was more comfortable being Batman than Bruce Wayne, and Alfred kind of got him out there. And I think they're doing a good job of showing what you're doing led to the Riddler, so you have to do something else. And I think we're going to see that play out in the next couple movies. That he's rich, he can do a lot more things to help out the city, than just you know jumping around and beating up bad guys in this Batman costume. The top 1% are fueled by corporate greed. We are the 99%. Yeah! And Batman's here to support us. What? No, I, uh, has anybody seen a bat cycle parked around here? Tell them, Batman. Tell them how millionaires are destroying our country. The bat cycle. I should go. It's daytime. So I think we're going to see that kind of play out. I think we're going to see him kind of become the Batman who can have a protege. Because right now, I mean, he is not in a good spot. No. No. And if he tried to pull a Robin or anything else, it would go bad. I think he's going to get to that point where he will have the ability to... Well, that is something that he does always struggle with in the, uh, in the movies, the TV shows, and the comics, where he attempts to, you know, to care for somebody like Dick, but at the same time, a lot of the things that he's doing are to mold him to be prepared for the mission. Have you forgotten what happened with Jason? I'll never forget what happened to Jason. He was a good soldier. He honored me. But the war goes on. This is something that Batman lives for, and it's, it's more like he's trying to create more soldiers to serve under him, more so than he's trying to raise an upstanding adult to be a citizen uh, in, in the city. Because we see even after, uh, you know, Dick no longer becomes Robin, after he moves on to become... Um, Nightwing. After he moves on to become Nightwing, he still is a crime fighter. Like, he can never let it go because that's just his life now. So, yeah, this is always something that Bruce has struggled with. The difference between being Bruce Wayne and being the Batman. And I know as he gets on in age, he fully embraces the Batman. And there's even an excellent episode of Batman Beyond where he even admits as much. Uh, there was a villain that was trying to um, get him out of the way and traps him in some sort of like dream world, but he keeps referring to him as, as uh, Bruce or whatever. And that's how he's able to snap out of it. Tell me something. Why were you so sure those voices weren't coming from you? Well, first, I know I'm not psychotic. I hope your other reason is more convincing. And second, the voice kept calling me Bruce. In my mind, that's not what I call myself. What do you call yourself? 
Oh yeah, I suppose you would. As far as like making more Batman movies, I, I think this would be, because in this movie, he didn't really act that different between Bruce Wayne no. and Batman. The only di difference was really he was wearing the Batman outfit, you know? Because And then they went to that bar and asked to see Falcone twice. Mm -hmm. You know who I am? He says the same thing both times they opened the door. Those guys were so dumb they couldn't put it together, you yeah. know? <laughs> but, you know, so his character would evolve so that that Bruce would be different from the Batman, you know, if you see that happening over the next few movies. You know, I think Bale, Christian Bale's Batman did that great. His Bruce Wayne was a lot different than the Batman. Yeah. And I think they're going for that, but they're building up to it. I think we're gonna see, you know, that develop over the next couple movies. And I also think we're also going to see his detective skills grow because I think the Riddler was the first time, he's second year of being Batman. And I think this is the first time that he really had to do any kind of detective work. Mm -hmm. any deep detective work so you know he was lacking a little bit you know he was lacking when he tried to fly when he was escaping from the police and he was using yeah. that outfit his his gadgets his detective work everything he needs to be to be you know that best batman he's building towards it yeah and is. i think we're going to see in the next movie probably another villain that is going to push those detective skills and i thought about it a lot i don't think it's going to be the court of Owls, but i think he might start because I think that's when it's going. His detective work is going to culminate into mm -hmm. top notch when he figures all of that out. So I think the next movie is going to be. I don't think it's going to be Joker. I hope not. I hope not too. I think it might be Mr. Freeze. I would love to see a well done on screen Mr. Freeze. Get out of here. In this universe, there's only one absolute. Everything. Jesus. Because I think it's going to propel him in his Bruce Wayne persona, and I think it's going to propel him in his detective work. In the Bruce Wayne persona, he's going to find out that basically this guy's doing it because of what happened to his wife. Mm -hmm. And maybe Bruce is going to see like, man, if I did a little more, you know, charity work and helped out, he wouldn't have to. Because I think, you know, obviously all of these chemicals are going to start missing, they're going to be robbed, and he's going to have to figure out what they're all needed for, figure out who's doing it, and then, you know, once it all comes together and he realizes why he's doing it. Because Mr. Freeze, if done right, is a very sympathetic villain. How long does she have to stay in there? Until a cure can be found. Until then, my love, we'll be here together. And Bruce Wayne, or the Batman, is going to figure out, damn, I could have done him more as Bruce Wayne so he didn't get to this point than I did for the Batman. Because the Riddler was the Riddler because of Batman. He said, I saw what you did, and I see what I needed to do because you did it, and I learned. Where here, Mr. Freeze is going to teach him, you could have done more with Bruce Wayne mm -hmm. to help me out. So it's going to basically all culminate together in probably the third movie when he really realizes. I really do hope you're right. Uh, I hope that they kind of hold on to their Joker Trump card instead of trying to play that right away. Um, but one thing that I noticed about this movie uh, was they were... They were playing with uh, with two different aspects of the Batman universe, and I think they have to do this for the movies to make them watchable, to make people in actually enjoy them. But if this was Batman year two of being Batman, uh, to my knowledge, he was very much still embracing and utilizing his Bruce Wayne side. And the way that the Riddler acted was also nothing like early Riddler was. You know, I, I mean, I'm glad that they didn't go with, like, the cheesy slapstick, you know, nonsense. I'm glad they didn't go that route, but... He did I have those blow-ups. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I feel like what they were doing, where they were pulling pieces from later Batman media, later Batman comics, like, uh, I, I mentioned um, before that... This movie uses a lot, a lot from The Long Halloween. And I think that gives to why it was so long. I think that was just because that's just, you know, that was the length of time needed to tell that story. Also, in the animated version of, of The Long Halloween, the Riddler was the villain. Sorry, spoilers if you haven't seen <laughs> a movie that's like three years old now. But, yeah. Uh, so I think they have to do that to make the movie watchable. They have to pull these aspects of Batman to make him more brooding, to make him, um, you know, uh, more 
watchable on screen where it might not necessarily be the Batman that he should have been at that point in time. So it's like they want to have their cake and eat it too. You know, I, I thought the way they portrayed the Batman was damn near perfect for this point in his story, how, how they're going about it. Okay. Because, I mean, Robert Pattinson did not have a lot of lines. I no, was thinking that really while I was watching the movie. He did so much without speaking. You know, mm-hmm. we, we saw Pedro Pascal do that with The Mandalorian with his mask on and not yeah. talking. I thought Bruce Wayne or Robert Pattinson, both as Bruce Wayne when he was at that funeral and as Batman in the costume, just said so much without saying anything. Like when a cop would kind of walk near him and he would just kind of look at him and the cop would back off. And he was intimidating. He had a huge presence, but he was also very quiet. And I mean, I, I once again, I think I love this more, this movie more than anyone else here. And I thought that was one of the reasons why. It all, everything kind of just came together. The, the score, the acting, the I did writing, like the score, yeah. Just all so well together. And I, I don't yeah. think we're talking about what's next anymore. <laughs> no, but but yeah, I, I do want to kind of go into uh, what I, unfortunately, what I think is next. I hope that you're right, and I hope that they don't play Joker too early, but I think they will. I would love to see them keep doing what they're doing and pull from other Batman media and, and be able to utilize some of the things that really make Batman a great standalone character because he can be. He doesn't need the greater Justice League. He doesn't need Superman or uh, anyone else to play off of. He can be a good standalone character. He can be the Dark Knight. We've seen it done before. And he can have good movies if written and, you know, directed well. But I'm afraid the way that movie studios like to interfere I'm afraid that they're going to be like, but these numbers say that Joker is what will bring people to the to the, the theaters. Joker is what we need to put into this movie. And also, maybe two more villains, too, because <laughs> you can never have enough. And so, when we were talking earlier about how they're going to probably utilize these TV shows to world build, my hope is that that's what they're going to do. And they're going to build on some of these other villains in the Penguin series. Maybe we'll see some of the other crime families or some of the other criminals even evolve out of that and eventually make their way into the movies. But I think the movie studios are going to be like, no, 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 no. We need to sell action figures, so... (laughs) It's very likely. And the most you should see of Batman in those shows is like the the light in the sky. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or hear hear the Batmobile driving by or something like that. That's the most you should see of Batman. Or you see some guys like tied up with a little note. Right. Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. They're bad. Right. <laughs> These guys suck. And I, I really like how they didn't give, you know, not only did they not give the origin story again, they didn't give one for Catwoman either. Yeah, I was really surprised. I, yeah. Okay, so good for you on that. Yeah, <laughs> they, get, they just kind of just said, all right, here we are, we're starting here. Everyone, Everyone knows who awesome. Catwoman is at yep. this point. Everyone yeah. knows who the Batman is. Yeah. And that was great. They didn't need to do it again. We did not need to see another, because what movie would have he have been seeing at this point? It would have been 2002, were they seeing Shrek? <laughs> with with uh, the cat as Zorro, yeah. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Fear me if you dare. Hey, look, a little cat. Look out, Shrek! He got a piece. It's a cat, donkey. Now, ye auger, pray for mercy from puss in woods. Ooh, I'll kill that cat. So we've kind of basically said we're you know. What's next? Where we don't want it to go. <laughs> we no, we've don't want it said, to. We've also said where we hope it goes too. Well, yeah, we, we just we can all agree we don't want it to be the Joker. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. too soon. I mean, I don't want him to, but if they do it, and they do it right, and it's building because they could go another way. And I was thinking about this also. The fact that they showed Riddler and Joker, I'm sorry, unseen Arkham uh, <laughs> prisoner, right, right. Uh, <laughs> number two nine six eight. Yeah, you know, talking. <laughs> I was like, okay, could they go another route? Could they have the Joker in the second movie? Seems to be the Batman way of making movies. Except for the first, I guess it's not. But they did it once. Mm -hmm. So we could see him as the villain in the next movie. 
you know, we could see Harvey Dent being brought up in the Gotham City Police Department show or with the Penguin while he's trying to prosecute, whatever. You know, we start building this up, we get the Joker in a second, maybe we get, you know, Two-Face in the third. Could they be building not a trilogy, but a longer set of movies and we actually get an Arkham Asylum movie? Where Batman oh, has to go into the prison. Now that would be awesome. I would love to see that. That's, so that's a good theory. If we do get Joker in two, I hope it's building towards that Arkham Asylum arc. But I still want to see Court of Owls. There's so much. You know, that's the hardest thing about Batman mm. movies. There's so He's got many such out an there. expansive rogues gallery too. Mm. Such lore, such such a rogues gallery. Everyone wants to see something else. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as they they you know stick to excellent writing, well, like, make sure it's a good story, we'll be fine. But yeah. There's so much they could do. I hope Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves would do nine movies. And we still would I wouldn't be against that. Yeah. Yeah, as long as he learns to like speed up his motions. <laughs> so I have to ask you two a question because I was wondering this when we were watching the movie in the theater. Uh, the thugs that he beats up at one point that are wearing the face makeup. Now, was the implication and you know, it could be the case because they didn't show Batman's origin story, is the implication that the Joker was already present in Gotham, and because he's an unnamed prisoner in Arkham, that Batman has already thwarted him at least once, and he's been locked up? I don't think Batman has thwarted him yet, mm -hmm. but I think he got arrested, and he's learning. And he's going to come out, he was, you know, he was year one Joker, okay. and he was doing something, and whatever happened to him, he became his thing, but he got arrested, or he wanted to get into Arkham, for all we know. Because of and thugs, they seemed like they were probably followers of him, or at least copycats or something. I, I think, I think... Inspired he, by Yeah. I think he is known in, in Gotham, mm -hmm. and I think we'll find that out, but I don't think he's had his first run with the Batman yet. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think he's, um... The, the Batman doesn't know about the Joker, and the Joker really doesn't know what he's going to become yet. He's just becoming something. He's been inspired to chaos. Yes. I take this guy. Armed robbery, double homicide. Got a taste for the theatrical, like you. Leaves a calling card. I'll look into it. What do you think? Do you think this will become part of the greater DCEU? I, I don't. I don't see it mingling with the other, and I don't think it needs to. I agree 100%. I don't think it is, and I, it, I think it would be worse if it did. I think what he's created here is its own single sort of Gotham sort of story. It's not about Superman. It's not about Metropolis. It's not about, oh, it's not about the Green Lanterns. I think bringing those elements into this would ruin it. So I think it's outside of it, and I think it's better off that way. I tend to agree. I uh, theorized originally that that was going to be the case, that they were going to find some way to shoehorn in other characters. I have said that um, other Batman were going to flashpoint their way into this in some way. and Because it's it's just such a DCWB thing to do. They've, <laughs> they've done this kind of thing so many times that it seemed likely, but so far, it looks like they're kind of going the route of the Nolan Batman, where it's like, yeah, no, no, it stands on its own. It's going to, this is not a part of the the messed up, disjointed, whatever the DC expanded universe is at this point. Um, let James Gunn have that. Let him play with his new toys that he's acquired. Uh, you know, rest in peace, Zack Snyder. May you never make another DC movie again. <laughs> and, and honestly, and the fact that Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton are the Batman in Flashpoint, and then we know Michael Keaton is going to be the Batman in Batgirl, leads a lot more evidence to say, Pattinson Reeves thing is something it's its own whole thing. whole thing. We have the DCEU and I hope they stick to it. I hope they don't try to bring, you know, Pattinson into the greater DCEU. I hope so too. And I hope they don't try to shove Superman into Batman 4, uh, Return of the Riddler or something. Yeah, like the Dark Knight tril trilogy stands The Morning of Martha. <laughs> why did you say that name? Martha, why did you say that name? Oh, stop! Please! Stop. Why did you say that name? It's his mother's name. It's his mother's name. <laughs> I was gonna say, what was that guy's? What? 
<laughs> in the movie. That's what we think is next for the Batman. But what do you guys think? Please add us at Twitter. Leave a comment down below. And we will see you next time on Not Your Status Quo.